Welcome to episode 26 of Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. I am your host, Sir Cussalot Travis Pointer, and I am joined by my co-host, Mara the Shark Watkins. You're a dickhead. I know. Hello, everyone. It's fine. (laughs) Whatever. I have time to play with you tonight. I need to get this done. (laughs) Mara's over here trying to play around. I'm trying to work. I wasn't playing around. I just wanted to tell you something. Yeah, well, you had like thirty minutes to tell me something, so Shut the fuck you up. fail. You you're done. You're out of time. But as always, we're here to talk about you know all of the Berlanti verse, Flareo verse, Flareo verse, Arrow verse, Cluster verse, all that shit. Supergirl, <laughs> Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, all them shows. Even though there's no Legends right now, but you know what we're here for. There's no Legends for a while, like not till like October. Yeah, something like that. Or Comic Con. Yeah, we'll have some news from Comic-Con. Yeah, you're right. But how are you today, Mara? I'm tired. Yeah, I know the feeling. I've been up since like 6.30 this morning. Or 5.30 in your time zone. I was about to say, that's about the time I woke up. But no, I woke up around 6.30, not 5.30. I was on the train by then when you woke up. I mean, but, you know, to be fair, you know. It was still six thirty your time and six thirty my time. So either way, it's early as fuck. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying six thirty is okay. I wasn't happy with being awake that early. I just was. But into Monday. Yeah, we'll talk about Supergirl. Supergirl, because that's what happened on Monday. Cause that's what I'm show sure other stuff on happened Monday. on Monday, but yeah, this is the important stuff though. <laughs> What happened on Supergirl is more important than anything you can tell me that happened on Monday. I went to work on Monday, so nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, Supergirl's more important. You're right. But anywho, so Alex was taken. Yeah, name of the episode was Alex. But before Shit. Alex was even taken, it started off with this whole conflict between Maggie and Kara about, you know, Supergirl not, you know, doing real work, just busting through and punching her shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Can I just say, hmm? this was like the first episode, I feel like I agreed with Maggie on like 85% of the shit that she said. I mean, yeah, she was right. You disagree with Maggie before? Like, what was wrong with Maggie? Not with like, not disagree with her, but like, you know, sometimes I was kind of like, well, why'd you have to do that, Maggie? Like, in the beginning, when they first introduced her, you know, back to when, you know, she was playing Alex hot and cold and mm-hmm. they kind of didn't like her. Um, and I just kind of didn't like her mm-hmm. when she was playing Alex hot and cold. So. Yeah, I hear you. But like, you know, when she's talking about Kara, she was talking about how, like, you know, sometimes you got to talk through things. Like, like there's a whole possibility of things that could have happened, but... I was so close to talking him out of it. And Kara was like, well, whatever. I saved them anyway. Yeah, she wasn't thinking about all the collateral and all that shit, you know. Like, yeah, I saved them. That's all that matters. No, that's not all that matters. Right? Because what if you bust through the door and then they open fire on everyone? Exactly. So, yeah, you got to think these things through. But, also found out that there's this thing that criminals have been doing when they've been getting caught by a car using the Supergirl defense. You know, there's no due process and all that kind of stuff for her. You know, no warrants. You know, when shit. Maggie brought that up, I was kind of like, I'm not even surprised by that. Like, I could totally see that being a thing. Like, it didn't really phase me when she said that because I was like, I could see how car like, oh, could yeah. accidentally use, like, excessive force not realizing it. It's yeah. not like, you know, with NYPD cops using excessive force very obviously. Oh, man. Um, but then be like, oh, I had no idea. Or the security <laughs> guard in Orange is the New Black choking out Poussey, not realizing he's kneeing her in the back. But spoilers. I mean, not spoiling anything for me. I, I've seen like three episodes and that was more than I cared to see. But it just, it just wasn't my thing. Um, 
We also got these things with Mama Daxamite trying to bond with Lena, trying to slide in like, hey, let's make this shit together. And yeah, trying to appeal to the fact that Lena doesn't get along with her family and all that shit. I feel like in next week's episode, because I know we'll talk about it at the end, I feel like they're going to, like, so we know in the episode that Lena calls Kara at some point, you know, when they get deeper into the whole Alex is missing conflict where Lena calls to ask about Mama Daxamite. And, you know, she says this isn't a good time. I feel like they're going to pull up the whole, you didn't you didn't tell me anything. You didn't answer my call or you didn't answer my question. You know, when I called, you were going through other stuff. So it's like, what would you want her to do? Why would you just, I want to know what made Lena change her mind towards the end. What do you mean? Like change her mind... Who made her change? Like how she, so like you know, we'll see. Like we see in the episode, you know, she, she says she doesn't trust her, and she asks her to leave. Right? Mm -hmm. She calls Kara asking, you know, she because she was getting ready to ask. Um, she's gonna ask Kara, you what's, know, what she if she knows that. who. Well, she was gonna ask her what she, Well, she was gonna ask if she what she should do about it because she was calling Kara. And, she wasn't calling Supergirl. She remember she doesn't know that Kara is Supergirl. So true. So she was just asking for advice as to how to deal with the situation, basically. Um, but Car could have heard it, and then she could have warned her. She's like, "Don't do it." Yeah, she could. As have. a reporter, I've heard bad things. Yeah. Um. And I just kind of want to know what swayed her to be like, "This is something that we can do." You know what I mean? Like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that basically what's going on it just went from "I don't trust you." To what do I do to all right let's do this yeah well I think well you saw at the end it was um the whole thing with she was you know like okay I'll think about it but afterwards you know she gives her some thought and she's like well things that she was saying did sound good to me kind of thing and she you know she said she resolved it already so in her head it's like okay she doesn't realize that you know the son that she was talking about that you know betrayed her betrayed her for Kara she doesn't realize that you know her husband dying was as a result of her, was a result of her killing him you know pointless exactly so she doesn't realize all those things so you know she has no reason not to completely trust her because the reason she gave her for not you know telling her everything is a reason that she can understand and that she's dealt with her whole life you know like I'm a Luthor so people automatically think I'm against aliens you know so, okay. So yeah, so I can understand that she gives some thoughts like, yeah, I mean, I can understand her being leery of me and all that kind of shit. All right, let's do this. So I can understand that. Um, this whole episode seemed like basically just an excuse to get to the point of the end where you know Alex and Maggie finally use the L word because he hadn't heard him say it up until now. Even though we kind of knew that was the case because she basically she would do anything for her. Maggie would do anything for her, which led to some conflict with her and Kara because both of them were like, yeah, I love her. Well, I love her too. Well, I'm doing this because I love her. Well, I'm doing this because I love her. And all that shit was going on. I, I feel like Kara was super selfish in this episode. Yeah, she was She was Kara. She was the same as Supergirl always is. It's just like, you know, I'm doing what I think I need to do. And I don't give a fuck what anybody else has to say. I'm going to do what I think is right. That's what she always does. It's just that now you realize that doesn't always work. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I just feel like she was like extra this episode. Yeah, they probably turned it up just a little bit just to make sure it was clear. You know, but it's basically just a hyped up version of how she always is. Make sure you knew that she was being selfish. Yeah. Exactly. They had to make sure they got the point across. We didn't get any Jimmy here, did we? No, we didn't. No Jimmy. No, but I'm okay with that. Like, I know you it would have been. I feel like for the episode, it would have been shot. <laughs> uh, fuck up. <laughs> like, I feel like it would have been too much for the episode because, like, to be honest, I could have gone without the Lena and Lady Daxamite kind of sideline story as well because it just kind of felt like it was just thrown in there well I know it wasn't just thrown in there but like you know what I mean it was set up for next week basically yeah 
Um, Which is cool and all, but like. They can't see you shrug, so, you know. Oh, well, I'm shrugging. <laughs> I forgot. This isn't one of our live ones. Yeah, we're not live right now, so. Now look what you've done to me. Now I'm used to being live. You've only been live one time, Mar. <laughs> <laughs> but we've done two podcasts that people have seen what I look like. So <laughs> that's what I mean. Oh shit. Yeah. Those other create your conversation, check it out. YouTube, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all those. Check it out. Stitcher also, you know. Other podcast services all over the place, you know. Download it. Check us out. Anyway. Um. Yeah, it makes it. This whole episode just seemed like an excuse to get to that L word between those two, and for which I guess is okay. I mean, you gotta set it up somehow. Yeah, and then it was also Car figuring out like, yo, I can't just punch my way through everything. I gotta actually like use my brain, and you know. I mean, she has a very gifted brain, so I feel like she should use it sometimes rather than her fist. Yeah. Who is she, Superman? <laughs> Speaking of which, where the fuck has he been all season? From what I've heard, he'll be back for the finale. I mean, it's only, what, like two episodes away? This was like episode 20, right? They made such a big deal of, you know, fucking casting Tyler Hecklin to only have him in three I don't think they really made that big of a deal about it. I think you turned it into a big deal for yourself when they said it. I did not. Like, I really don't think they really made that big of a deal about it. I really think that was all like you did. in your head. It's not all in my head. Yeah. Along with those voices, it's all right there in your head. There's no voices in my head. Stop telling me to say that. Exactly. <laughs> but, anyway... Anything else with this particular episode that you want to make sure we touch on? No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I feel like that's always the case with Super with Supergirl. Like, like we talk about it, and I'm just kind of like, I'm over it now. It's been like two days since it came on. Like, well, the thing I is with Supergirl, it. it's like I'm not. It's not my least favorite because it's not. Um, it's like I would imagine Arrow is your least favorite. Actually, it's not. Legends has been my least favorite. Oh, okay. Since it came on. See, since Legends been off, I forgot all about Legends too. Like, yeah. Well, of this lot, like Arrow is my least favorite, but Legends is probably at the bottom, and then it like goes back and forth between Supergirl and Arrow for me. Because there's some weeks where just like Arrow is just like, eh. you know, and then there's other weeks when Supergirl is just like, I get it, but, eh. Legends yeah, is one of those things like it's normally at the bottom, but the thing is, it's a consistent at the bottom. I go into Legends knowing what I'm getting when I watch Legends, and it never disappoints. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just that with Arrow and Supergirl, I, I guess I expect more from them, and I don't always get it. You know what I mean? I think out of the four, I think I expect more from the Flash and Arrow. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they were the first, you know. Because. Yeah, and I feel like Flash is like, technically, I guess you could say would be the biggest. I feel like I hear more people praise the Flash. Well, yeah, than I, do the thing is, I mean, Flash is usually at the top for me. It's just it's the most consistently good show of the four. Yeah, I just feel like Arrow and the fucking flashbacks kind of just like sunk it into a hole. Yo, and, and they I, kept digging here's deep the for thing, like, like this seasons. is the last season of it, and then this particular episode came out, and they just let's do flashbacks from just like less than a year ago now. Like, what the fuck? We'll get to that in a second, right, though. They, they can't let go of it. Greg Berlanti has a flashback problem. Like they I did flashbacks for no reason. There was no well, there's not there, there was a reason for the flashbacks in this episode, but. He even did flashbacks of like right before this season. Like like a year ago. Yeah, not literally. even. It was 11 months. Like he said oh, 11 months. It wasn't even a year. Like, okay. I literally missed 
the splits the split moment where they put up how long ago because i was like when the fuck did this happen yes it was 11 like, months ago yeah it was right after they broke up right after the damien dark shit 11 fucking months like <laughs> just can't he can't let the flashbacks go and i uh, like jesus he has an addiction you know what? Let's just continue talking about Arrow right now, since we've gotten into this. We're gonna do we're gonna do it out of order this time, because we're in the Arrow now. It up, yeah, we're gonna switch it up. We're in the Arrow. This episode was called Underneath. You know, Oliver and Felicity get caught on the ground because Chase hit him with an EMP. So of course, you know, Felicity's little microchip thingy that's in her spine. Is run by electrical power, I guess. And it's like, yep, yep, that don't work no more. So she can't walk no more. So Oliver has to carry her everywhere. And Oliver's hard-headed. And he ain't listened to her. Like, yo, if you try to go to the elevator shaft, Chase knew this. He set some kind of trap. I'm like, yo, I got this. He goes up there. His dumb ass gets hit with the booby trap. He falls and fucks himself up. I feel like, you know, I know, like, we sometimes rag on Felicity. You know, we come down on her really heavy. I do sometimes. Cause she, I really Because she acts like a know-it-all. But I feel like in the moment when it comes to talking about Chase, I feel like she's right. Like, Chase normally has a contingency plan for everything. And he kind of really proved that most of the season up until, you know, he got outed. And then, you know, then he had to kind of, like, do things on the fly. But when he was setting up, you know, the bunker... I was like, of course he's going to think of every which way you can get in and out of there, and he's going to fuck it up for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When the team discovers that Oliver's all, you know, he's not around to go looking for him and shit, and they figure out what's going on, of course. Like, all right, well, how do we get him out of there? And, you know, Wild Dog does what Wild Dog does. I'm like, yeah, hey, let me just do this with the little blowtorch and shit, and... Curtis like, hey, there's methane, but it's too late and, pfft, you know, fucks his arm up and shit. But it's wild, Everyone though. just getting fucked up in this episode. Can I just say for one split second, I really thought they were going to kill Felicity by dropping her down there. Why would you think that? I don't know. I was I like, had no I'll... inclination ever that one of them wouldn't make it. Like, <laughs> just... like what was it when... When she was like, you have to let me go. I was like, do it. I was trying to see what happens. Do it. <laughs> You're terrible. Like, does it shred her legs that are already useless? Well, they're only useless because the microchip's not working. They'll fix the chip. She'll be all right. As you saw at the end of the episode. But my I feel th- like Felicity should have had a contingency plan. Or Courage had a contingency plan for, you know, EMPs. I mean, I guess. I, don't, I, just, I just never would have. I make a device that makes her walk again. My first thought isn't, well, what if she gets attacked by an EMP? <laughs> I feel like working with Arrow, anyone working with the Arrow should have a contingency plan for anything. You just had a nigga who has been around for several hundred years, you know, because of a pit of water, and another one who has magical powers. I'm ready for anything. I'm prepared for anything that comes my way. You can try to be prepared for everything, but you're not going to be prepared for everything. That's the problem. You know what I mean. I know. I hear you. I hear you. But there's only so much you can prepare for. And, you know, we get, speaking of those flashbacks, you know, we found out that, you know, Oliver and Felicity got it on in the bunker a while back after they had broke up. Felicity was like, yeah, yeah, you got, dick, you got good dick, but we got to, like, still cut this off. Like, <laughs> That's basically what she said. Like, yeah, I like that shit, but yeah, we can't do this. We can't be us no more because you don't trust wait, me. Wait. When they started kissing under the um, the salmon ladder, the monkey bar thing, the what? The salmon ladder. That's what it's called. There we go. I knew it was something weird. Um, the salmon ladder yeah. thing, and he like turned her around like really fast to like unbutton her thing. I thought he was gonna like push bend her, her over. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's what you're supposed to do, but he didn't do it. But yeah, he pushed like in that situation. So she was into she it too. So surprised. Yeah, man. That's the time you turn around and like, mm, and you snatch the jeans down. And, yeah, that's what she was supposed to do. But you can't do that on CW. That's network TV. They ain't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> they only went as far as the bra. You know, they got down to the bra, and his shirt was off, and like, yeah, 
from fade to black, you know, it's implied. You know what happened. <laughs> Pretty much. That's network TV. Uh, let's see. So in the midst of their little trust issues they got going on, Lila and John are having their own their own trust issues. Cause he's all like, "What the fuck you been That's doing?" Marriage. Huh? That's just marriage. Don't yeah. get over it. I've never been <laughs> married before, so I don't know. But um, yeah, they're going back and forth. She was like, "Well, you're a hypocrite because you you like back Oliver every time he does fucked up shit, and you don't tell him nothing." Little does she know I, he's telling him shit all the time. Like one. Oliver, this is fucked up. Don't do this shit. Oliver just does it anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily he backs him on it. It's kind of just like I'm just gonna stop arguing with this nigga about it. Yeah, because it's just a waste of time. I'm on his team, and he's does he just does this shit. I tell him don't do it, and he does it anyway. What the fuck I'm gonna do? much what else we got here find out that like Argus been you know of course been spying on the team they done copied and stole Curtis's T-spheres and shit which his balls yeah man stealing his balls why you steal Curtis balls don't make them stealable my thing is for one I understand why they did it for the purpose of the story in this in this episode, my problem with that is that makes what he does less unique. Because one of the things that makes Mr. Terrific, Mr. Terrific, are his T spheres, you know? And now mm-hmm. somebody else can just make them because they just copied his shit, you know? Like, they're no longer special. You know what I mean? So you think he's going to let go of his T spheres? No, no, no. I don't think that's. I don't think he's going to let go of him at all. I'm just thinking it was a misstep for them to do it this way. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. That's all. So we saw in a little flashback that Curtis was giving Felicity a lecture about all like, yeah, you know, y'all still love each other. Yada, 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 yada. Y'all need to just go ahead and get back together and shit. I mean, I've been saying that since, you know, Damien Dark paralyzed. But, you know. Yeah, well, she didn't walk out of him until after she could walk again. Like, she learned how to walk again and then left him standing there. Like, that's fucked up. Like, you learn how to walk again and you don't need him no more? That's fucked up. <laughs> I don't need you no more. Yeah, man. That was dirty. But, I need Thea back. I- I've decided that in this episode. Like, how about, well, yeah, why is well, why she- has Willow Holland been gone for so long? Who? Willa Holland. She's the one who plays Thea. Oh, well, she, um, well, in the continuity of the show, she just said, like, she needed some time to go away for a while because she was doing fucked up shit. She was like, yeah, I can't be doing shit like this. I need to get myself together. So she's gone for now. She probably had a DUI. Probably, like, have her on probation. <laughs> Um, we also see, you Just know, saying. with she's Oliver, been, like she's been gone. Like they don't even call her. <laughs> well, they really didn't have time to call her in this one. But um, I'm just saying. I hear you. I understand. Do you really though? Not really, because I really don't listen when you talk. But you know, story of my life. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone ever really listens when I talk. <laughs> oh, we listen. We listen sometimes. Maybe. Probably not. Love you. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Lies and garbage. Oh, let's see. Um, anything else with this episode? Oh, Oliver going through his identity issues. Like, I don't know who I am anymore because of what Chase did to me, blah, blah, blah. Felicia's like, well, you need to figure it out then because, yeah. I still want that if shit. If there's any chance of us getting back together, you gotta know who you are. That's the thing. Like, she pretty much acknowledged, like, yeah, I still want that shit, so I need you to get it together so I can have it. <laughs> She's just kind of like, I need you to know who you are before we can become a we. Yeah. yeah. That's basically it. But, I have 
understand it. I understand girl talk like that. I did get to see that, you know, I like the fact that Felicity finally really understood where Oliver was coming from when he was like, yo, listen, <laughs> do not go down this path. I don't want you going down this path because I've seen this path. Like, I've been on this path. You don't want to go there. And instead of her <laughs> fighting it all the time and like, don't tell me that blah, blah, blah. She actually like paid attention and was like, look, I get it. I know. And yada, yada, yada. So that was good to hear. But then we get to That's the, all I have about this episode. The ending. Chase finally finds William. Well, doesn't finally, but he finds William, you know, Oliver's kid. Or Michael. Or Matthew, whatever the fuck yeah, he said. Yeah, Matthew his name is was. what he said his name was. He's like, yeah, your real name is William before your mom left. You know my mom? No, I know your dad. Dun, dun, dun. And that's when he should go, I don't even know my dad, and run away. He should have, because he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> why are white kids so trusting? This is why they get taken the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where all these kidnappers come from. But yeah, that is that's it for me on Arrow. You got anything else? I think you said you didn't. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Let's I kind of hope they show what Chase does with William Matthew next episode. William Matthew. <laughs> when, with Matthew. Or you made it sound Malia. like Matthew was his middle name. There we go. Maybe it is. Or Malium. There we go. We'll just merge the names together. That sounds like a narcotic. Or a prescription. Malium. Medica- Malium sounds like a prescription medication. Take two doses of Malium every day. Possible side effects are drowsiness, hair loss, <laughs> nausea, and attacks and by Prometheus. Heartburn. Possible death. <laughs> Possible death by throwing <laughs> star from evil s- villains. <laughs> anyway, let's go True on to that. Flash because this is what I've been wanting to talk about all goddamn day. I'm pretty sure we've been wanting to talk about it all week. Yeah, yeah. I need to just um, go ahead and tell me that I was right, because I was waiting on that. So, yes, I was right. It is Barry. I called it, too. Did you, though? Did I, you? I said Barry was one of my choices. Did you? I had two choices. Run the tape back. And Barry run the tape was, back. I don't remember. What? I said, run the tape back. I don't remember you saying that. You want me to pull up last week's podcast? Yep. Like, actually run. physically play it? No, don't do that. Right now? Don't, don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show the people who said what. <laughs> oh man, I was drunk. I don't remember, but um, of course, I know I had it in my nose last week, so I'm sure I said it last week. Didn't I say it last week? I think I said it last week. Did I say you said it? it too? We both said it. I don't believe you. Look, you're not Jamie Fox. You can't blame it on the alcohol, whether you believe me or not. Blame it on the it goose. Happened. Got you feeling loose. Play with on the try. Got you in the zone. <laughs> oh man, that song got me in some trouble. Um, let's see. Let's talk about this episode, though. Like I said, I guess we both called it that. Barry in the future with Savitar. Mara says she said it. I don't believe her, but we'll go with it now. It made the most sense. Like, yeah, it had to be somebody that really knew them. And he went to the future and he saw all of them still there. And, like, you know, the effect that it had on everybody. Like, yeah, it has. Only one that really made sense was Barry, which would explain why future Barry didn't tell present Barry that it was Barry. <laughs> He just wasn't... But did emo? Oh, so we'll call future Barry emo Barry because now there's two future Barrys. So there's evil future Barry, and then there's emo future Barry, and then there's current Barry. All right. Or we can now just did... call him Savitar because that's what he's been calling himself all season. <laughs> that's true, but I think it's funnier to call him evil future Barry. Okay. Um. Evil future Barry, sure, with the fucked up face. Yeah, I I have questions. I want to know what the fuck happened to his face. Freezer burn. <laughs> what? Fucking around with Killer Frost. Like some... 
fucking it around with Killer like Frost. She came face to face with McDonald's fryer. Oh man, Killer fucking around with Killer Frost. She gave him freezer burn on his face. And so he's gonna work with her? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a love tap. She fucked up my face. Love taps, but I'm man. gonna help her. It was love taps. Whatever. But anywho, does emo Future Barry know that evil Future Barry is Savitar? I think he does. I think he did know. You think so? Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll ever find out if he knew? Because I, I don't see him going back to the future. Yeah, to I doubt they'll Barry. tell us that he knew, but I think he did. Because the thing is, Savitar knew everything that happened. And so he also knew that Barry was going to figure out that he was Barry. Dude, like it took you long enough to figure this out, which leads me to believe that emo future Barry also figured it out. Okay. So yeah, I think he knew also. He just didn't want to say it because it fucked his head up so much. He didn't know how to deal with it. All right, and thus turning him into emo Barry. Yeah, and Wally going all catatonic after. Does yeah. it get more emo than? Your own future self killing your future, killing your, uh, killing your, the love of your life. Like, how much more emo does it get than that? Yeah, it's so like, yo, why did I kill Iris? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, Fla- that's what I have questions about. It's like, Flashpoint. What made Flashpoint? All this happened because of Flashpoint. Yup. You may get that. But I want to know what specifically happened. To one, disfigure his face. To two, go, I'm going to go back and kill Iris. Like, what? Did she, like, burn his favorite dish in the future? And he was like, nah, fuck this. This is not the future I want. I think that at some point he comes to the conclusion that he needs to be able to do something. And to be able to do it. And to get to the point where he's focused enough to do it. That Iris needs to die and not be a part of his life. Where do I get that from? Because once upon well, didn't a t- they say that Emo Barry didn't get like fast enough until after Iris died? I believe so. I believe I remember hearing that. But where I got that idea from actually came from, you know, my background in playing a lot of video games. Yeah, Go I know. On. There's this video game from the PS3 generation called Infamous. And you play this... The guy with the glowy hands. Electricity powers, yeah. Glowy hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, his future self is the main villain because he needs to get his past self to the point where he's powerful enough and makes himself powerful enough to face this coming monster, this beast that's coming. And he wasn't strong enough originally to defeat him. But he needs his past self to focus enough to get his powers to the point where he can defeat this beast. And to do that, he eliminates all distractions from that, including the love of his life. So I have to... one question about that. Because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, that's a very plausible theory. But how do they figure that, like, you have to figure in a diff- there's a different timeline. I mean, like, like you said, there's Flashpoint. So there's a different timeline where things went differently, you know, where Barry got the speed that he needed to get to, like, you know, to, to reach his true potential, mm-hmm. you know. But, like, you have to imagine on some level he was kind of just like, like, I don't know, I'm probably not explaining this right, because it's, like, it's confusing to hear, for me to think, to think it, and try and explain it. Okay, well, take your time. Like, so. Start over. So, how did Evil Barry come to the conclusion that killing Iris would do something, you know, like, would, uh, get to the true potential? It's kind of like, it's kind of like, think of, like, there's two timelines here, right? There's a timeline where, you know, Iris lives and he still reaches his true potential, right? And then... But to, he reaches it, but it's too late when he reaches it. Yeah. And so that, that makes me wonder, like, what happened, though? And does it have something to do with, like, his face being... Dis- you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what happened and how far into the future does Evil Barry, who probably wasn't evil yet, go... 
so, Iris got to go. Well, think about the headline in that newspaper that Reverse Flash was always looking at in the time chamber. Mm-hmm. That still was Flash is missing. It just the uh-huh. person who wrote the article was different. It wasn't Iris after Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. So that leads me to believe that at that point he wasn't fast enough to do whatever he was trying to do at that point. You follow me? Or did he run so fast that he disintegrated? No, because that's what the fission suits are for. Friction. friction. Isn't there one point where like he kind of like just dies? Huh? What are you? Isn't t- there like a part? Isn't there like a point in like the Flash comics where Barry runs literally so fast that like I think he dies or something like that? Not that I know. Or am I confused? Or am I confusing a different comic? Maybe I am. Not that I know of. I'm no comic like big time expert. I know just enough to make me dangerous, but <laughs> like I don't recall anything like that ever happening to the Flash. You, I thought Barry died at some point, like not in the well, show. I well, he, just in the well yeah, he he ended up dying, but I don't think it was because he ran too fast. Oh. Pretty much every comic book character has died at some point. Well, of originals, you know. Okay. But here's the thing about this. Now that Barry knows that he's Savitar, where does he go from here? I don't know. Like, like how do they, they deal with like, this? They know that Barry eventually becomes Savitar. How do they stop that from happening? Do they stop that from happening? What the fuck is going to happen? That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you get to a point? That's what I'm saying. Like, what point did he become evil? Like, I want to know what happened. The, I need the thing. Brady is a flash forward. But that's the thing. Here's the thing. Did he really become evil or did he just change his mode of thinking to where he's playing ahead for a bigger threat? Like I thought. And he just knows necessary sacrifices must be made. That's not necessarily evil. It's fucked up, but not really evil okay. if he's trying to serve the greater good. You know what I mean? That could be what's happening. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just saying it's a possibility. But I feel like the Barry we've been watching, I feel like he wouldn't sacrifice someone of his own. You get what I'm saying? Like, right now, I feel he like wouldn't. he's one of those people right who would be like, fuck the wouldn't. world. Right now, he wouldn't. This is way, way future. And he's been in the Speed Force for a long fucking time, too. Like, okay. you know, so who knows? That's my that's my thing. Like, is he necessarily evil or is he just fucked up in the head to where he thinks that this is what's the right thing to do because he's gone through so much and all that he's like gone through. Like his face pressed against a George Foreman. Yeah, yeah. Or freezer burn, like I said, because I still think that's what it is. I like that idea of it being freezer burn. She was trying to like, you know, Caitlin's serving him now. She's with him. Like, let's get it on tonight. And But then So do you think like cause we all know Caitlin knows who Savitar is. Well Killer Frost knows who Savitar is. Mm-hmm. But do you think Savitar tells if it's her who does that to his face, do you think he would tell her? That she did that to his face? Yeah. I don't think he cares. Because, I, cause it, you know, if I was Killer Frost, I'd be like, the fuck happened to your face, Barry? Like, they've been friends for so long, you know, even though she's, like, a bad guy now, it's kind of just, like, I would generally, not even, like, out of caring. Just, just curiosity. Just because I'm nosy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would want to know what happened to your face. I don't know. I guess there are more pressing issues at the time as you know like the fact that Barry is fucking Savitar like it was just like like oh shit okay okay all right I'm with you what we doing like that was basically what happened and true yeah so how long did it take you in this current episode before you realized that it was Barry 
I think from the trailer when they started, you know, when they said, you know, this about us, you know, that about us, I know who you are. It kind of like. I know at that like point you, su- you suspected it, but I want to know at what point did you know for sure? I guess when like, you know, when, you know, when he finally gets towards the end and, you know, he finally confronts him, he gives that longer speech. And I was just like, this is fucking very. Oh, see it with me. It was when they met him that first time and he was and like, and Kaylin was or killer frost was reciting everything. And she was like, you're more alike than, you know, I kind of thought she was reciting it word for word though. That was when it said when she was reciting what Barry said word for word. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking Barry. Cause my other, only other option was Jay. And it's like, okay, well, this person had to be here at this point, and Jay's not there now. So, like, yeah, it's Barry. It's fucking Barry. And at that point, that was when I knew. I'm just curious. Like when, she, the- when she was like, you're more alike than you know, and I was like, this just sounds like she's setting it up for it to be Barry. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll never say I knew because I knew it was him, but I will say, it like, when he came out, out of the suit, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, called it. Yeah. I wasn't expecting the defigured face, but you know. Well, they had to do something. They couldn't let him just look exactly the same. Like you know, Ma- like I, they could. They already lie, did though. the emo hair, so they couldn't do that again. You know. So. I wasn't gonna lie though. When he stepped out, I thought it was going to be emo Barry. Like I was expecting, like emo haircut, maybe some dark Fallout Boy eyeliner. <laughs> Oh man! Maybe like a black choker going around his neck, like looking super emo. <laughs> Special. But yeah, it like I really wanted it to be someone else, so I could be like, "Oh my god, what the fuck!" Yeah. But then it was like Barry, and I was just like, "Okay." Well, they kind of laid kinda down like... all those hints before, and it was just like, "Okay, well, there's only like there's a very short list of people who could fit this whole thing," you know? Exactly. So, and then, like I said, it was like, to me, only ones that really fit were Barry and Jay. And once they did the whole thing when they were, you know, she was reciting everything word for word. Like, okay, yeah, Jay's wasn't there at this point, so it has to be Barry. Mine so, was Barry or um, what's his face? I forgot his name already. It doesn't really matter. Only because of Caitlin's response to them. Ronnie? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I kept... Yeah, there were Thank people online just... that were saying it might be that it would be Ronnie because of what happened in the first season when he ended up getting sucked into the shit, maybe being part of the Speed Force and all that kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, but that would make him know everything up to that point, but he wouldn't know everything that happened after that, you know. So I, yeah. I, I was never really buying into that, but and since Barry is like a um a constant violator of going back and forth in time. Yeah, yeah, Barry doesn't respect the timeline at all. He says, fuck your timeline. I do what I want. Like, he, like, it's kind of like when he said he was going to go to the future and we were all just like, stop messing with time. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Technically, if you go into the future, you're not really messing with time anymore. You're just looking at it. Because the future isn't written. This is true. To, yesterday but is history. Like just... General. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Get out. I like that movie too. But uh <laughs> I guess like my kind of thing is just fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say, because now you said that dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about how Barry's a hab- habitual Oh time yeah. I thought like one of the rules of time travel i mean even though i know like um barry doesn't continuously time travel like the legends do but i thought the point was was to never go to the future not to see your own self and all this craziness like these were rules that the legends had laid out yeah and they violated it too yeah but like i said barry don't see that shit so but i'm just kind of curious now if it, like, you know, with the legends, when they see themselves, they cause a time quake. How come when Barry goes into the future and f- finds his future self, that too doesn't cause a time quake if they're all in the same universe? Maybe you're asking too many questions. 
maybe I am. Yeah. Maybe no one's asking the right ones. You're entirely, you know, it's entirely possible that that's the correct thing, but you know, it's kind of like when you said it's kind of kind of like when you were, when we discussed that episode of Legends, of you know, uh, when they had the spear, when <laughs> the Legion of Doom had the spear, and you said why wasn't yeah. Arrow at, at least affected by this if they're mm-hmm. in the same universe? I was like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Even even so, like end of Legends, you know, this last episode they were dinosaurs why don't they have dinosaurs on flash and arrow <laughs> they haven't migrated to that part yet and so they should all no be, one's really concerned about it they yet. should all be living in the land of the lost right now wait what would we say dun, 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 dun. Now we cross the line, falling through time, living in the land of the lost. Why are you like covering your face right now? What is that really gonna do? I don't understand. Like, what you think that's really gonna accomplish? I can't hear you because now you're covering your mouth and your microphone can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I was saying I was like grabbing my face. Like, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Living in the land of the lost. <laughs> yes, they should all be living in the land of the lost right now. If you know they're running parallel with each other and you know well i think this is what i was trying to explain before when you asked why the spear didn't affect arrow's timeline i know they said they were in the same time period but so like um so say the episodes that we're in of arrow and flash right mhm say like we are like in Legends episodes, they were still like episodes behind. Like, like their like say like their episodes like their time is just a little bit more drawn out. Do you get what I'm saying? No. So like, okay, so let's say the Spear episode in Legends is episode 19, right? And so ironically, Arrow would be episode 19, right? That same week. Let's just say, ironic. Let's say like that's how the layout is, right? When the events of episode 19 in Legends happens, the events of the events of episode 19 Arrow are actually like episode 14 of Legends. Do you get what I'm saying? That like would that's make how sense. they would line up. That would make sense if they hadn't done a crossover with all of them already. But what I'm saying is did their time up. is different. Like, not their time is different, but like, so see how, see how this week's episode of Arrow takes place right like five minutes after last week's episode mm-hmm. is going on. So Flash may have had a week of time flow by in between last week's and this week, but only five minutes have gone by between last week's episode of Arrow and this week's episode. Do you get what I'm saying now? I hear you. Like I said, that would make sense if they hadn't already had things from other shows affect what happened on the other shows the next day. If they hadn't already done that, that would make sense. But they've done that already. Well, I tried. I'm trying to give you a I hear you. I hear you. But like I said, Flashpoint happened, and the next day, John had a a son instead of a daughter. You know what I mean? Like they, these things actually did And I feel like happen. from the Flashpoint crossover, I feel like that's when they kind of took their own pacing of time. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the thing. Then there were other crossovers because we just had that musical crossover, and they lined so up the there. Super, Flash the Supergirl have the same pace, but they're also on two different Earths. Stop. Earths. It. Stop it. Stop it. You know Never. it. You know it doesn't make no damn sense. Anyway, it makes sense in my head. It doesn't. You're just trying to make it make sense. No, it makes sense to me. Anyway, maybe we I'm just explaining got, it wrong. 
No, it, un, it's, here's the thing. Your explanation makes sense had they not done certain things. Like, but they did these other things that made them line up. So, anyway, also I forgot to mention in this episode of Flash, we had another utterance of the L word from Joe and Cecile. Caused all kind of rips and all that kind of shit. But, yeah, so that happened too. So, anyway. I feel like Joe is slowly losing his mind. Yeah, I mean, he's... Like counting down to the day that his daughter is killed by his adopted son, so you know. He didn't tell. Oh, he did tell them. Yes, he did. Because that's what next episode's about. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> did he tell Iris and Joe that he's the one who kills her? Here's the thing: as I'm watching this episode, I kind of feel like Iris was figuring it out too. Like as they were talking, and like they they like give each other these weird looks, or Iris would give him looks more than him giving her. But Iris would be like, I feel like Iris was figuring it out too. I feel like Iris just come to terms with it, but I feel like Iris come to terms to dying like several times already. Yeah. Poor Iris. I would never want to be part of a group where I have to come to terms with dying like several times throughout my young adulthood. But next episode, it's called Cause and Effect. I guess Cisco's like, yo, let me fuck up your memory so you don't remember shit. And like maybe that'll like help us stop but, Savitar. But I wanna what I want to understand is how is that going to help stop him from being Savitar? Mara, like from creating new memories. Mama, I don't know. I I don't know. Like this is Cisco logic here. I don't I don't understand it either. We just, I guess we just got. Uh, that was watch. what I want to talk about real quickly. Did we? Can we just point out how lovely Cisco's hair is flowing? Sure. <laughs> just gets sexier every episode. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it was hey, in my notes. I had to. I had whatever to whatever it. does it for you. I'm not judging you for it. I just didn't really pay attention to that. Um. Sorry, I have a big nerd crush on Cisco. It's fine. I'm not knocking you for it. So, let me ask you this question like I ask you every week. Who's winning? Did anybody win this week, though? <laughs> Savitar, I guess. I guess Savitar, like future evil Barry's winning right now. I guess that was my choice too. Or Chase, like Chase is Chase and Evil Barry, like the only two are probably winning right now. And the bad guys are killing it this week. You're right. And I was like, said my choice was Savitar. I can see why you said why you would say Chase, but yeah, Savitar. I think. But so, yeah, because he didn't have as much screen time. He didn't really do as much except for setting up the bunker as a booby trap. Hmm. But Savitar was persistent this whole. I mean, week. he only showed up twice. Mhm. But had he had his goon Killer Frost doing all his shit for him. Oh, forgot to mention the Killer Frost doing the surfing on the ice thing like Iceman on X Men. Like, look at that. I'm like, look at that shit. Okay. Yo, that slow motion effect that they did during that one fight was crazy towards the beginning. Which one? I think it was when they were at the university. Oh, with um when she blasted um when she blasted at Cisco and like Barry jumped in the way, is that what you're talking about? At Cisco at the the the, the scientist lady Tracy. Like yeah. that whole transaction of fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I can also guess you could say HR is kind of, you know, running up and winning. He may have a new lady friend. He's on his way to getting there. Yeah, yeah. He's still on his way though. He he hasn't. He's not officially winning yet. He's just he's getting he's he's getting the score up. Yeah. All right. Who's losing? Who's losing? Um, my ridiculous losing would be Kara because she eats ham and pineapple on pizza, and that's unforgivable. Yeah. But for real losing, it is Barry. So Barry's winning. 
So Barry is no, winning Barry's... and Barry is losing. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's an interesting week this is. And it's I can't I can't say I disagree with you. Um, even though I would say Oliver is losing more than Barry's losing, but you know. Like Oliver's he in survived a, this week. Oliver's in a hospital. I mean Barry survived this week too, but Oliver's in a hospital bed. He's been rejected. His son's about to get snatched up by his arch nemesis, like I feel like Oliver's losing more than Barry this week, but I can see why you would say Barry's losing. I'm just saying, like, how much more losing is to find out that you kill your, you kill your, the love of your life. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, but for all we know. It's for the greater good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not even what I was going to say. I mean, because Oliver basically killed the love of his life, too. He, the reason why Laurel died. I would go as far as she he was her love of her life. Oliver hasn't said, you know, that she's the love of his life. Just because he didn't say it out loud doesn't mean it's not true. He hasn't said it about Felicity either, but yet they've been closer to getting to the end of an aisle than him and Laurel ever have. Well, not necessarily. I mean, him and Laurel had plenty of history before he like, like got snatched up on the island. So you just this is just the most you've seen on TV. If you say so, it's just you know Laurel got you know got blocked by her you know by her own sister first, and then. By... <laughs> but I mean, Laurel knew that Oliver was fucking his way around. Star City, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so right. I feel like that, like at that point, before he, you know, got shipwrecked and shit, like they probably wouldn't have gotten married to begin with. Like that would that would be just my assumption because that's how I, I feel, feel like, like the re- there's a reason why when they created the like when the aliens created that fantasy world in the in the crossover that it was a wedding between Oliver and Laurel. You think it's because Oliver? Yep. There's a I'm reason why Melissa that was the, that was the reason day. why that was created, and that was the reason why he was okay with it before they realized that it was fake. Nope, Team Melissa all day, every day. Yeah, I guess. But with that, we're gonna end this week's episode of Super Flashy Arrow of tomorrow. Remember. You can always find us on both Twitter and Instagram at Creation Magazine. Also on Facebook.com slash Creation Magazine. You can find me at Sir Cussalot. That is at S-I-R underscore C-U-S-S-A-L-O-T-T. Mara, tell them where they can find you. On Instagram and Twitter at Mara the Shark underscore. That's M-A-R-A-D-A-S-H-A-R-K with an underscore. Awesome. Well, that's going to be it for this week. We'll see you again next week. Until then, stay creative, stay free. Later, y'all.